2017 Peugeot 5008 review. From 17,709 pounds. 7 point. Handsome seven-seater offers a smart interior with certain key practicality benefits, but it's a slightly mixed bag to drive. What is it? The Peugeot 5008, which is no longer a people mover, as you may have noticed. That may seem odd, considering it's a car whose reason for being is that it has seven seats, where its sister car, the 3008, does not. Now the 5008 is an SUV albeit an SUV that won't ever be available with four-wheel drive. But be that as it may, whichever three letters are used to describe the new 5008's particular niche, or Peugeot's reason for repositioning it, what matters is whether this is a good seven-seater. And, after first inspection, we'd say that it is although perhaps not the very good one they'd have you believe. The car goes on sale in the UK in June, in a range that mirrors that of the shorter 3008. It will be offered with a choice of petrol turbos engines making between 128 bhp and 163 bhp and 99, 118, 148 and 178 bhp diesels, most of which can be mated to a choice of 6-speed manual or 6-speed torque converter automatic gearboxes. Rated CO2 emissions do a lot to recommend the car and will mitigate the effect of what are likely to be fairly expensive prices when they're announced later this year for company car drivers. Generous equipment levels will have the same effect, of course. And for anyone disappointed by Peugeot's decision to leave out a conventional four-wheel drive system here, it makes amends with an option called Advanced Grip Control which bundles multimodal traction control and a hill descent control system with Continental Conti cross-contact hybrid on and off-road tires. What's it like? There are clearly bigger and more expensive large family cars you might buy, so the 5008 has to strike a perfect compromise between fairly compact and manageable exterior dimensions and well-packaged occupant space. It does that well enough, with notable strong suits and a few hiccups. The car has three individual second-row chairs, each offering plenty of legroom on account of the 165mm that has been added to the platform's wheelbase as part of the 5008's making. Each chair folds, slides, and reclines into various positions, and each has its own ISO-fixed child seat anchorages, thumbs up for that. But to sit in, their cushions feel a bit hard, flat, short and slim, and second row headroom is quite poor if you option your car with Peugeot's panoramic glass sunroof. Avoid that and headroom in both the first and second rows is much improved, Al Hawk it's well worth noting that with top line GT trim cars, you're stuck with glass roof. The 5008's third row seats aren't really big enough for adult passengers, but they're still typically useful for this type of car. On the plus side, they're easy to fold and can even be removed, liberating up to 1,000 liters of boot space behind the second row. In the minus column, those rearmost seats don't have child seat anchorages and the 5008's front passenger seat doesn't either, so carrying a small army of kids in this car might not be as straightforward as it might have been. The 5008's driving environment gives with one hand to take away with another, just as the 3008s does. The fascia is quite striking, stylish, richly finished and apparently well constructed, while the standard flat screen digital instruments are definitely a standout feature, giving you plenty of choice about what information you want in front of you. The layout of the controls, however the high seat, downsized, and low sprouting steering wheel, High set instruments remain strange and unintuitive even so many years after we first encountered the i-cockpit concept on the current 208 Super Mini. Peugeot's argument is that its customers love the layout, and that familiarity makes it seem less odd but it hasn't yet become that way for us. To drive, the 5008 is competent, secure handling, and comfortable for the most part, its suspension settings conferring a fairly gentle, compliant ride when the road surface is good. Over testing undulations, the car's vertical body control becomes a bit loose and wallowy, while broken, sharp-edged asphalt can bring the occasional thump and crash from the arches. 
a Nissan X-Trail probably has a broader based comfort level. The Nissan's carefully metered handling and steering would also beat the 5008. The Peugeot's handling is precise enough and well controlled through bends, if a little remote and bothersome thanks to a contrived, over-direct and elastic feeling steering system, and the wheel becomes overly light and particularly troubling at town speeds. Peugeot's 2.0-liter blue FV diesel engine seems a good match for the 5008 S mass and has better refinement and tractability than the 1.6 diesel we tested in the new 3008 just a few months ago. The shift quality of the 6-speed manual gearbox left a bit to be desired but doesn't prevent the powertrain being pleasant to engage with at all times except when you press the car's obligatory sport button, which adds uncalled for speaker-generated noise to the engine's soundtrack and blights the pedal response with oversensitivity in the first inch or so of travel. Should I buy one? The upper mid-range diesel engine makes for a perfectly decent and mostly competitive overall driving experience from the 5008, although not one that recommends it nearly so well as its smart styling or classy interior. There are a few too many caveats necessary no four-wheel drive, flaws in the car's practicality showing, likely ambitious pricing and slightly muddled and misconceived handling to be able to recommend this car unconditionally. Still, we can't deny that the 5008 is one of the more desirable seven-seaters to have come to market lately and, together with the VW Touran, Renault Grand Scenic, Skoda Kodiak and BMW 2 Series Grand Tourer, it promises to make family life on the road much more pleasant in 2017 than it was just a couple of years ago. Peugeot 5008 2.0 Blue AV 150 Allure Location Lisbon, Portugal. On sale. June. Price. £29,000, EST. Engine. 4 CYLS in line, 1,997 cubic centimeters, diesel. Power. 148 bhp at 4,000 rpm. Torque. 273 pounds foot at 2000 rpm gearbox 6 spd manual curb weight 1490 kilograms 0 to 62 miles per hour 9.6 sec top speed 128 miles per hour economy 61.4 mpg combined CO2 slash tax band 118G slash KM 25% Rivals Nissan X Trail 1.6 DCI 132 WD Envision Skoda Kodiak 2.0 TDI 154 X4 SE Technology